I was at Claremont in a lecture series and someone asked me the question in California, they said, how, how do we come out of this crisis? How do I become the minister that changes the world? And I thought about Luke 4, Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind. And then it closes, preach the acceptable year of the Lord, which Eugene Peterson said means act now. This is your year. Oh God. Did you get it? Act now. This is your year. No, 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 no. No. Crazy. Get, cr I can't. Crazy. You know, just tell them, they say, well, well what you doing are crazy. Don't wait till you graduate. Don't wait till you get the raise. Don't wait till the money's in your pocket. Don't wait until the car is in the garage. Now, for the ordinary, for you. So I said to them, I can't tell you exactly how to measure I don't know really how, but I'll say this. I heard a story once that helped me to understand how inadequate my ministry really was how the story humbled me because I thought I was doing something until I heard this story. And this story I, has stayed with me for years. And whenever I think I'm really doing something, I think about the rag man. You say, wait a minute now, what, what, what? Walter Wangerin wrote a book called The Rag Man. I have adopted the story and adapted it for your purpose. And I'm going to close with it because I like stories. And how many know a picture is worth a thousand words? So I told the students in California, and I tell you tonight exactly what I think will stick with you 50 years from today. You're gonna to have to use your sanctified imagination. When I was a kid, I was raised in Cleveland, Ohio. I lived on a street called Bryant Avenue between East 105th and Parkview Drive. It was inner city, it was, I guess, what they call ghetto. We didn't feel that, but that's, but I remember every week on a Wednesday, I would hear, now this is, I would hear a wagon come down the street with a horse pulling it. So I just want you to understand those of you who don't know that horses used to come down the street. <laughs> and there was a guy on the, on the wagon that used to say, hey, Marty, new rags for old rags. Hey, Marty. 
And I thought about this rag man as I read this story. New rags for old rags. Come on, walk with me. Yeah. Indianapolis. Yeah. So we're following the rag man. And he comes upon a woman near a wellness center who's a battered woman, a bru abused woman. She's weeping thousands of tears. Her face is smeared by the dirt that she had probably put her face in. It looked as if she was looking out of a prison. She had been bruised, she had been battered, she had been abused, and she was full of tears. And the rag man, hey, mighty, new rags for old rags, took mm, her tears, exchanged a clean cloth, blessed her, touched her, encouraged her, and then walked away. Now, you got to follow him now. But as he walked away, she had a clear face with a clean rag, but he had thousands of tears. And, and follow him now, he comes up to Another man laying in the street, bleeding. Someone had robbed him and beaten him. And he was bleeding, I mean bleeding profusely. And the rag man said, hey, my New rags for old rags. And he reached down and he touched him and he blessed him. And he gave him a new Rag, he wiped his face and gave him a new, and then he got up and walked away. And as he walked away, I want you to picture him. He's got thousands of tears, and now he's bloody. Mm -hmm. The man is clean. The rag man is bloody. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Just use your imagination and walk with me. And then he comes across a man named Bart. He was sitting on the curb with a white cane with a red tip. And he touched the man and he said, new rags for old rags. And watch him now, he leaves the man, the man walks away without the cane. But the rag man, look at him now, thousands of tears, blood all over him. And now he's got a cane with a red tip. And then he comes upon a man who was sitting on the steps, who was looking depressed and despondent. He had only one arm. The rag man said, new rags for old rags. Hey, mighty. He touched the man, but he did something else. He took, mm, his jacket off and gave it to the man. But the strange thing was that the jacket he took off also had his arm in it. Now you have to see the rag man going down the street, pulling his wagon full of new rags, 
with one hand mm -hmm. and a white stick mm -hmm. and a bloody face mm -hmm. full of tears. Mm -hmm. And I followed him to a garbage heap. And he climbed up a hill. And there the ragman laid down. And it broke my heart because he died. Now, there was an abandoned car that I got in and fell asleep. That was on Friday. And I'll be honest with you, I slept too long because I slept all the way through Saturday. But it was early. Sunday morning, I looked on the hill of the garbage heap, and there he was, both arms, no stick, clean cloths, alive. I can't tell you what kind of minister you ought to be or even what are the elements that make you God's minister. But I will recommend the rag man. All right, all right, all right. And if you think you're doing something now, Use that as your measuring stick. And so I simply argue that the cross be raised again in the marketplace as well as the steeple of the church. For Christ was not crucified on a communion table between two candles. But he was crucified on a cross between two thieves where thieves gamble and talk smut. That's where he died. And that's what he died about. Hey! Everybody. <laughs> New rags for old rags.